Hey subscribers, what's up? It's Vivs from Slidenerd here. Please tell me this is the last video. This is what you're asking right now. But then even I hope the same thing because I don't want to go another video with this. So let's complete our activity with our RSS feeds from TechCrunch. So here I have my list view which is going to display data once it gets the results inside this on post execute method here. Now we need an adapter first that is capable of handling this data. So we are going to go down and make our own adapter at the bottom of the code. I'm going to go here, say class my adapter extends base adapter here. So at this point, I'll have to overwrite some methods, just add unimplemented methods. And as you guys notice, there's a quite a lot of methods out here. I've again talked about these in my videos on the list view. If you guys haven't seen them, please go back and check them out because otherwise you're not going to understand this completely. So first let's talk about how, what kind of data our adapter is going to store. It's going to store the same kind of data that is being returned from our task, which is our hash map, array list, string, string, whatever. So over here, make a string, comma, string, and then call this results over here. Or you can call this data source here. So we need a constructor that is going to take my adapter, and this is going to initialize this. Here we are going to set the data source by having the same thing copy pasted again. Wow, this is a big pain to copy paste each time. So we go and do that here. So now I'll simply say this dot data source equals to data source here. Now also the other thing that we are going to require inside the constructor is going to be a context object because inside the get view method we need to perform the layout inflation of this custom row dot XML which I have which is going to display each item for each row over here. It looks something like this the title, the date, the image and then the description uh, at the bottom of that. So let's go back here and have our context object inside the constructor using context context over here of course I got to import the context class and have it declared at the top again make it this dot context equals to context and that takes care of that now inside the get count method what I want to return would be the number of elements that are there inside my array list hash map string string let's just initialize this array list over here to make sure we don't encounter a null error situation so get count will return the number of elements inside data source data source dot get or data source or size I believe object at position get item now this is going to return the hash map at a given position so here we can say data source dot get at the given position over there now the next thing is the item ID which is position itself then there's the get view which is the most important method now here we want to make sure that we put all the values from our array list hash map to our list views custom row. So I'm going to check if it's the first time. Now if you guys remember the list view optimization video where I talked about here we are going to check first we're going to make a view row equals to convert view and we're going to check if this is null or not. We're going to say if row equals equals null it means it's the first time things are happening otherwise it's a subsequent time because the get view method will be called a large number of times and every time performing inflation is not such a great idea because it takes a lot of resources to perform inflation every time so here I'm gonna have the layout inflator first we need a layout inflator right so let's go and make a layout inflator at the top here I'm gonna say layout inflator layout inflator just initialize that using the context here by saying layout inflator is context dot get system service context dot layout inflator service and of course perform the type casting and that takes care of that so we can directly go here and we can say layout inflator dot inflate our custom row which is r dot layout dot custom row here keep the parent whatever it was make it false at the end again if you guys are not sure why I have put these two parameters at the end please watch the layout inflator video on my playlist I've talked about it there so row equals to that over there now what we need is a view holder which is gonna hold all these things inside that is this text view this date the image and the other text view so let's make a holder class at the bottom of this so going at the bottom of the adapter I make a class called my, my holder here this is gonna have our text view gonna be article title text then there is another text view okay we need to import the text view. let me complete the four fields inside the so now I have the four things inside my holder. Now why am I making this holder? Well, to avoid recreating the view or calling find view by ID each time. I could directly go and say here row dot find view by ID, but I don't want to do that every time. I just want to do it when this row is null. So go here, 
give this a view parameter use that view object to initialize these four items by saying article title text equals to view dot find view by id r dot id dot article title text over here just initialize that perform the type casting same way let me initialize the other three objects so at this point i have all these four fields initialized inside my holder so i'm going to create an object of my holder here by saying my holder holder equals to null initially if it's the first time then holder will be initialized by saying new my holder over here and we will pass the row inside now notice carefully this row contains the custom rows elements and that means it's gonna go here and initialize these four fields for the first time otherwise what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this by saying row dot set tag over here save the holder inside that In the subsequent time what we want to simply do is say row dot get tag over here and put that inside our holder over here so just perform the typecasting and that takes care of that again I have discussed all this in my list view optimization video in detail if you haven't seen that please check them out so go down here and now let's fill our data that we want to do so first thing we say holder dot article title text dot set text now first thing that we are going to need is the hash map object that represents a particular item at a given position given by int position so here what I'm gonna say, say data source dot get item at position so this is gonna give me a hash map over here which is gonna be string comma string we can call this temp map or current item something like that I'll say current item over here so from this current item we are gonna get our data so I'm gonna say holder dot article title text dot set text that is gonna be our current item dot get now if you guys remember while saving the title we gave it the key title so now we can use the same key to find that data if you go back above here and inside our async task remember we said current map dot put title and we saved that value here so the same thing I'm gonna get here by saying current item dot get title the same way I can set the image view as well I can say holder dot article publish date dot set text current item dot get and that would be published date I believe let me just cross check what I entered over there at the top so here if you notice that was pub date which I kept as the key over there so that's the same thing I'm gonna enter over here as pub date same way I'll add the image view by saying holder dot article image dot set image URI we can directly set the URI of an image so that can be like URI dot parse and we can say current item dot get and that would be image URL so get the image from that particular URL and set that as our image URI now the last but not the least is the description I'm gonna say holder dot article description text dot set text over here that's gonna be current item dot get if you guys remember I think it was DESC let me go and see what I just saved its description totally over here so let's just get it the same way so here simply say get and put our value description so that takes care of that return the row from here and I think we are pretty much done so our get view method is complete at this point now let's go to our on post execute this is the place if you guys remember wow it's a lot of code huh at the top inside our on post execute where we had our log method just remove that here let's use our list view to place the data inside it so I have my list view initialized I'm gonna say articles list dot set adapter I'm gonna be new my adapter over here pass the context it's gonna be activity that is this itself the data source is gonna be results over there so that takes care of everything so let's run this and hope that things work perfectly so if you run this oh my god take a look at that BAM that works now the image has not been loaded yet because my internet on the phone is 2G internet which is very very slow so therefore the image is not loaded yet however you're welcome to write your own image loading through the input stream stuff if you want but then if you swipe down and if you see all the articles are there the title the description again the description and the published date needs to be modified a little bit but then this proves that our list view which is working with all the results gathered from all the latest news feed from TechCrunch so this shows that XML DOM parsing works now for your reference I will have all this code on github so be sure to search slide nerd on github and I'll catch you in the upcoming videos as we talk about Saks parser and the other parsers and how to work with them if you like what you saw please like this video share this video 
subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a